And one. Welcome back to the Brotherly Brawl at local host in Philadelphia. Philadelphia Hearthstone representing today, coming out strong. We are in the second of two semifinals because that is how semifinals work. <laughs> And we are ready to get into some action. We have Jay Fury and Rhinoceros. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Rhinoceros, but uh, he is a man after my own heart with his lineup. Uh, no druid or priest there. Bold strategy to come to a tournament and not bring uh, druid or priest. And obviously, I'm going to have to disagree with you on all counts because <laughs> I think I subscribe to the, the delay logic of bring the four best decks and see what happens. You know... For whatever reason, that's just never worked out for me. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to agree to disagree, but perhaps this matchup will uh, show us who's correct in this situation. Jay Fury representing Nerd Street. Yeah, uh, the regular here at uh, Local Host. Uh, been grinding tournaments here for a while, and uh, this is the first time he's been on stream since we started streaming them. Okay. He's, he, I'm sure he's won plenty of these before. <laughs> um, it's kind of like... Uh, we're going to make a sports ball joke, but in the NFL, before they started the Super Bowl, how the Eagles won uh, <laughs> national football championships. Sure, it's sure. kind of like that. He's yet to win a Super Bowl, but he, he has plenty of uh, championships before the, the brotherly brawl era absolutely, to hang his absolutely. hat on. So we'll see if he can pick up that illustrious brotherly brawl prize. He even, I believe, over the summer picked up a ticket to BlizzCon from a tournament finish over, uh, not here, but at uh, King of Prussia. Yes, he did, and he is going. He went. Is BlizzCon is, happened Next already. week. Next week. I don't know. I'm no, not. There's so many things. The There's so many things, though. They announced the new set at BlizzCon. Hasn't they announced the new yet. set at BlizzCon? I'm waiting for the HTT announcement. Talk to me then. Yeah, I, uh, I think more than the next set, everyone's excited to hear what changes are going to be brought into the pro scene for next year. That has to happen in the next four or five days, right? I think the season starts soon. So whenever, I don't season know if anyone from Blizzard is watching. Uh, season starts January, actually. There's there, no fall uh, season this year? There's no HCT points until January. That's so, why am I playing Hearthstone? Why are we here? What are we doing? To it's fine. To practice. Of to course, practice. of course. So we are probably ready to get into some matches. Um, Jay Fury looking ready to go as usual, jamming out to some music. <laughs> uh, Rhyme Nostris, I'm sure, equally as ready to go. I haven't seen the list, but uh, just from the hashtag Doom on the Warlock, I'm wondering if this may be even spicier than we anticipated. I am not sure. Could be, could be that Blood Bloom lock. Um, are they having an issue finding each other? I, I believe, probably having issue. Can can Rhyme hear us? Rhyme doesn't have headphones on. He does. He has head, he has the headphones on his head, but not. The okay, well it's fine. Just wondering. Jeez. <laughs> Producer getting getting testy. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, so they're gonna reset their client real quick. Should be able to find each other in a second. Yep, and there they are. Standard duel. You didn't get the request? I'll be right back. One second. Just to make sure. Just gotta handle these technical difficulties. Always shows up in one form or another, even at high level HCT events. So, Bill's just gonna take care of that quick as he can. Mad. None of this matters. <laughs> got some, uh, got some sound effects coming in. <laughs> Jay Fury looking, uh, looking a bit puzzled, but it seems like it may be working out now. And I think we've got a match. <laughs> Jam it. Jamming out to those YouTube tunes, getting getting in the zone. Now, just taking a second to think about 
what they want to queue up first, and uh, very important in the Conquest format, always, uh, what you want to queue up first. Always tough. I know some people, you, you know, I, personally sometimes I like to not think about it. I just, I go with a deck that I feel has a chance against everything to queue up first. Uh, some people, you know, put a little more thought in, try and do that counter queuing. I, uh, I like to think, what deck would I least want to have my back up against the wall with? Yeah. And right, I generally queue Shaman. <laughs> Because I do not want to have my back up against the wall with a Shaman. Yeah, it has that sort of awkward spot. can be very powerful when you're counter queuing it, but uh, other times you just... You, your draws are just dead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, so the Secret Mage coming out from Rhyme Nostris. I'm a big Control Mage fan. I think Secret Mage can get there. Just yeah. as much as any other deck. C certainly has a lot of uh, explosive power, and uh, when the secrets line up properly, you can uh, get some mind games going where your opponent just runs into everyone and, and doesn't even get a solid play on the board. But uh, Yeah, there's not much not much that can stop one two, the 1-2-3 one, secret. The Mana Rim Arcanologist, yeah. followed by... Counterspell especially can be strong up against Druid. But... Uh, Mirror Entity, uh, you know, usually you want your secrets drawn off that Arcanologist, and uh, this is a very slow curve for the Secret Mage. Also a very slow curve for the Druid. I think Levon definitely played his mulligans against the Control Mage. It's possible, it's possible. Um, you know, in general, you're going to want to be looking for ramp, so... Uh, he keeps the Nourish. I don't hate a Nourish keep in most case scenarios. Sure. Also keeps UI. Picks up second Nourish. So, does that make you feel better or worse about your Nourish Keep, the second Nourish? Um, I, I think it makes you feel a little bit better, actually, especially not having seen any ramp so far. Now that coin in hand is going to make playing a counter spell a bit awkward here, so I expect we'll see Kirin Tor into a Mirror Entity instead. Still forces him to burn the coin, though, which is valuable in a matchup where he's probably going to try to ramp as quickly yeah, as possible. So thinking that, all right, Counterspell is the more powerful option here, uh, perhaps thinking about wanting to protect his creatures. Um, surprised not to see the Doomsayer come down. You know, I would have I liked to see the Doomsayer there, um, but maybe not in the sense that... Uh, Probably dies if you play a like a single spell would would set it up to die. Correct. Looks like maybe he wanted to hear a power and then uh, coin the doomsayer. Um, I I would like to see the coin first, just so you you see that counter spell and are like know what's happening. But uh, now there's going to be the opportunity to doomsayer into a mirror entity, which is very strong uh, if you're you know. Not as a freeze mage, it's one of the ways you can make sure you get value out of that Doomsayer. Yeah. Um, so we, do we see a Mirror Entity, or do we just drop a 5-5? Five, five? I think uh, turn 4-5-5 five, five is fine. Uh, Water Elemental, probably also fine, but really want to get that aggression going. That is an interesting possible. inclusion in this deck, the Water Elemental. I, I mean, maybe there's a, a Jaina top end that we don't see? Uh, I doubt it. I think Water Elemental... As it is, uh, has always been a strong 4-drop for Mage, uh, and especially if you've got a tempo-oriented game plan, that freeze effect, one of the most powerful effects in the game. Yeah. Are we going to see a double trade here, or are we going to see this fireball come into play to push 9 damage to face? I would expect a, a double trade and further development, but... Because um, like you need a fireball and single down. trade, I, I possibly could agree on the uh, double trade there. But now, now Jay Fury gets that ramp going on. Uh, he ramps up to seven mana, so the next turn he can play Primordial Drake. Eater of uh, Secrets also coming into the hand. Interesting. I expect it's more teched for the odd quest mage, or some of these tempo, more control-oriented mages we've been seeing since Ike's top finish at DreamHack. But uh, just as just as useful against the secret mage. Yeah. Um. So I mean, we we see we see a four three. I think he's just considering if he wants to trade into the four three to set up for the primordial drake next turn, without telegraphing his next play it's too hard. Possibility, but uh, 
this point, 20 life, dropping down to 16. It's, uh, it's a bit risky business. Now, one fireball has been seen. So if his plan is to drop that Primordial Drake next turn, which currently there's no reasons why that wouldn't be the play, um, you may have to just sort of risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he's going to do. He's just going to risk it for the biscuit, and uh, Fireball would be lethal, correct? Yes. Yes, it would be, right? If he had top decked the Fireball there, would have put him a 10, and then yeah, 9 fireball, plus a ping. Yeah, Fireball would have been lethal. So, uh, fortunately for Rhymnoceros, you know, Checking that, all right, one fireball has been used, not great odds that the second one's there. Works out in his favor. Yeah, well, we have we have uh, Rhyme on our mage, so Rhyme will see if he oh, can... Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's no problem, but Rhyme, Rhyme is on mage, so uh, see if he can push this damage that he needs. I think this Primordial Drake is going to stand as a roadblock. I would like to see this uh, this mirror entity established this turn. I would like to see Mana Rim, uh, Kirin Tor into mirror entity that's the play that i would say here but that's yeah. just me you know these this the kieran tour oh, and oh. the the claw crystal runner have stuck on the board for quite a while so uh yeah i'm surprised not to see that same development but water elemental similarly a very strong minion and it sets up a nice trade into the 4-8 you can think think nothing really dies yeah it is and that was telegraphed pretty strongly so we are one mana off the um, the UI next turn that would save Jay Fury. Yeah, and that one turn could be quite important. We'll see what Babbling Book rolls here. It could just be the game. It could be the game. There's a couple outs here. That is not That's one of them. Probably one of the Correct. worst ones. No. Um. So if he goes trade ping, he could push three to face. Is it worth it? Uh, maybe. You know, you uh, you then get Frostbolt as an out. No I, Frostbolts have been seen so far. I don't hate it. I actually think that might be the play. You trade it's the 5-3, you it's ping a, it's the 4-8. But I could, I could see it. It's either that or you uh, try to establish this mirror entity. Yeah, double trade, like Kieran Tor, mirror entity. He's going to go with the double trade here. Pretty reasonable. Oh, he may just be freezing it and seeing what his next draw is, keeping the Cabal Crystal Runner alive a turn longer. I don't hate that. I think you also ping face to give yourself Fireball ping out, but uh, I would expect so. But uh, I think what would be more concerning in this position is spreading, spreading plague. plague. Um, that would have been another benefit to the Volcanic Potion play. Is you get that three damage in now, and uh, you've only got. The one minion left versus Plague. but uh, So we could see Eater come out. Um, we could see Eater and Jade Spirit. That would be a fine play. I think you would rather develop the Jade Behemoth, though. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, sitting on nine mana, not going to be able to play that Eater and a Taunt. The Taunt's more important. Kind of just going to have to risk that Mirror Entity. Yeah, you kind of have to play into it, you know? You kind of have to just say, uh, I win or lose based off of whether this is Counterspell or Mirror Entity. And if it's Counterspell, you're, you'd you would you'd be even more upset. You'd probably want to play a Nourish's turn just so you can UI the next right. turn. Right, yeah, yeah. So he's possibly thinking that, too. I'm sure there's a lot going on in the thought process right now. He's to, he wants to test for Counterspell. He wants to test for Mirror Entity. And he does not really have the time to test for both. Not so much. This is where that late wild growth can be nice. Yeah. But, uh, is this lethal on board? I think it's not quite. It may be with the volcanic potion, actually. It 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 is. Yeah. It is. And uh, we'll see. There's a specific way it. to do it, and I haven't worked it out exactly in my head yet, but there is a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think enough pumps on the uh, the mana worm. Get it there. This works just as well. This works fine. That's easy. Six no to need face. To get clever. So that is Rhyme Noceris taking game one with his mage over J Fury's Druid. So uh, we don't have to worry about that mage coming out from Rhyme Noceris anymore because in the conquest format, after he wins with that, it is no longer playable.
True enough, but uh, Jade, uh, you should be able to pick up a win later in the series. Uh, yeah, I think that Jade Druid is something that uh, is, is to be feared. I still ban Jade Druid. Even with Rogue running around, I ban absolutely. Jade Druid. Been, been janning, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> been banning Jade Druid for months, and uh, I suspect that's not really going to change. Yeah, I, I have no intention of stopping. I've seen a lot of Rogue bans lately, though. A lot of them. Um, a lot of the tournaments I've played in, I've seen my own Rogue band. Um, looks like a lot of good green on uh, Jay Fury's screen that we can yeah, see here, even, though. Uh, even the pros say, you know, just play the green card. Play the green <laughs> you'll, card. You'll be good. An even larger green man. <laughs> Summon an even larger green man. So, the Murloc Paladin from Rhinoceros, how do you feel about a Murloc Paladin in this meta right now? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's another one of those high-tier ladder decks. You know, the aggro decks have been doing very well for their matchups against Jade and Priest. Uh, Murloc Paladin, honestly, uh, a lot of people's choice for that, for that fourth deck in Rhinoceros' case. Without running, uh, Priest and, and Jade, it's just more aggro. It looks to be a all aggro lineup potentially. I can respect that in this meta. I think the uh, the art of the all aggro has been lost in Frozen Throne. It's and, been a while. Uh, it's been a while, and it's interesting to see uh, to see players who normally would play off meta decks end up playing um, aggro decks because that's what's yeah. off meta now. So yeah. the people that were bringing the wonky control decks, trying to be off meta, are now playing aggro decks. It's uh, it's a, it's a different time. <laughs> I uh, expect this war leader will come down. Do you? How do you feel about hydrologists to try and find a noble sack trading the the, the two three into the two two? And I don't hate it. But it still it plays into swipe pretty hard. Um, uh, I mean the the war leader would play into swipe a bit as well. Um, I like redemption here. I think it's their best redemption's bet. Redemption's uh, gonna push the most damage. And then you take the value trade and push face for four. Yeah, and that should, I think, because of sequencing, that will, off this presumably a swipe, bring back the Tide Caller. The Tide Caller will be back. We will have a. It'll be a 1 1, though. Uh, it'll be a 1 1, but uh, it'll swiftly be a 3 1. Or 4, four, one. four 1. Yeah. So we'll be seeing even more damage, but he doesn't swipe. Not going to play into that secret. Um. Yeah, it's it seems reasonable. It's fine. I think um, so. Here you go, war leader, and I think you you trade everything all. Well, you you trade everything but the tide caller. I would expect to see that play. Yeah, you would you would want to leave, you know, your two most mm. threatening minions on the board so that should that removal come down, uh, you know, you'll be left with a strong minion remaining. So we see trade trade. Oh, we do not see trade trade. We see eleven damage to face. Um, it's a lot of damage. It is. It is a lot of damage. I'll give him that. Um, it's hard to argue against hitting your opponent in the face for eleven. <laughs> it's pretty strong. Although it only would have been four damage sacrificed, and uh, that will make playing around this secret a little bit easier. And now. Rhinoceros needs to find that middle of his deck. Uh, he, he drew the early game well, but he still needs that top end. Yeah, there's a, a lot that can happen in those two turns before Bone Mare, Bone Mare. And uh, he may just be out of creatures by the time he gets to seven. And does Jay Fury throw a 4 4 down here? I think it's a 4 4 now. Yeah, I that, think you tempo out the 4 4. Strong. I think even if it was the second Jade Idol, there's no reason not to just get that 4 4 down. Yeah. I mean, he finds a minion he can play, <laughs> which you can only be so mad about. Yeah. Obviously, Finja would have been the uh, the best pickup, but uh, Hydrologist still a value value minion. We take him where we can get him, you know? We take what we can get here. And again, no Noble Sacrifice. Which would have been very strong in this case. I think Noble Absolutely. Sacrifice is probably one of the strongest plays for, for Rhinoceros right for now. Sure. Getaway Kodo, not too bad, but... Uh, He's gonna you hope telegraph it if you don't hero power. Yeah. He's gonna hope to find a he's gonna hope to get one of those, um our little two twos back. I could yeah. uh, the name the name escapes me. <laughs> Being able to uh just Daisy Chain Hydrologist. There it is, another. Hydrologist. <laughs> oh, thank you. Those little gardeners. <laughs> but he's not gonna 
play it, he's gonna float the mana. Um, does he is he trying to like have a cheesy Tyrion play here? Potentially, might uh, you know Tyrion or obviously Bone Mary very strong. Might just be concerned about well, you know, it feels so bad to get that Silver Hand recruit. Maybe he doesn't want to risk it. So the taunt comes down, a very nice wall slowly being built. Cold Lightseer keeps some of them alive. Well, uh, is it plus three or plus two? Without the war leader, that uh, it doesn't really represent too much damage still. It can't even punch through the three six. But we'll see the trades happen anyway. We've seen a swipe, so you're not too upset about leaving things on one HP. You're not loving it. But you're not too upset about it. And can we see a full clear? Because if we do not see a full clear, then our famous seven mana friend will be down next turn. Still, uh, I think you can clear well enough and leave that taunt up to not take any damage. And these jades are getting... they're getting up there. They are. We are now at six sixes. It's only turn seven. You know, uh, sometimes you... Uh, and it is a full clear. <laughs> you just... you keep making green men and, and they become... You know, good offense is a good defense, so. Um, there's an interesting strategy going around that um, your opponent can't kill you if they don't have any minions on board. Yeah, I mean, but usually <laughs> removal is card disadvantage. Yes. Yeah, short of board wipes. The menagerie is for if you keep trading one for one, eventually you're just going to be out of spot removal. Curator represents a very nice reload here. That's a very nice. That's a very nice hand. Uh, that's a very nice pickup from Curator. Those are three Beast Dragon Murlocs you like to see. Of the Murlocs possible to draw off that Curator, that is for sure the best one. Uh, unfortunately, it is a little too slow. Um, Lethal's definitely represented on board next turn, so we need to see Tyrion. And uh, this is one of the problems with the Murloc Paladin is you have that explosive start, but without the mid game to back it up, you know, one of those Cobalt Scale Banes or the Finja came in earlier, they could have maybe pushed him into the late game to, to close things out. But Tyrion, probably just not going to be enough. Ashbringer can't really uh, do any value trading. There's just not enough life left to use as a resource. Even if we had found the uh, Gentle Megasaur earlier, he would have been in a stronger position to push more damage. Yeah, that coming down turn four could have uh, closed things out pretty quickly. But as it stands, Jade just gonna roll on over. And he has the two mana to float the to for the lethal. He has the hero power here. Yep. I didn't know what kind of mana we were on. Uh, I see in the top right corner we were at nine, so that's uh gonna be lethal. And, yep, bottom right, buddy. <laughs> so the uh, Jay Fury takes a game with his Druid and knots the series back up at 1-1. You know, like I said, Jay Druid, just such a powerful deck. Uh, generally teched against aggro because you already have strong matchups against the control decks. Um, not surprised to see it pick up a win here. Yeah, I mean, it's bound to get there eventually. That's, uh, I do like queuing it first in the sense that it's it's It'll pick up a win eventually. Um, it depends what your your strategy is. I think um, I usually like to wait to play Jade Druid because of the concept that it'll pick up a win eventually. Sure. Um, yeah. It's a very nice game five deck, especially if you can pin it up against a priest for you know, game five. I think it all depends on you know whatever supports you mentally as a player. Exactly. Whether you you just want to pick up that win early to sort of build up your confidence and get things rolling, or if you're just like no, I want to. You know, do the risky stuff first, get it out of the way, and then it can be cruising from there. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's more of a mental thing, whichever player... Wow, this hand is really good against Murloc Paladin. <laughs> I was I was in a train of thought, and Seems I just got distracted strong. about how good this hand is uh, against you know, Murloc Paladin. I might even keep the Acolyte, but... Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate keeping the Acolyte. Um, I'm definitely keeping Pyro Holy Smite in Pain, though. Absolutely. Uh, quite a bit of early clear. Oh, oh no. my goodness! Whoa, the we pitching. Are, we are all what are you pitching? in. Uh, that's fine. For, you know uh, what? I'm sure he's he's definitely. There's two strategies you can take with priest, and mm -hmm. you can dig for that Raza and Anduin, or you can uh, control the early board. And he decides to go with our option of controlling the early board. It does. You know, it it usually is a safer option, but sometimes you do run out of steam. 
Wow. So this is the one of those situations where you, that dirty rat. Could be, could be quite strong. Only two minions in the hand, but you know, <laughs> you, you just can't, can't know until it comes down how much value you're going to be getting, or if you just lose the game on the spot. You could just lose the game on the spot. I think that's why a lot of people will hold it. The question is though, if you don't play it now, are you ever playing it? Well, there is the possibility against aggressive decks of just jamming it once you're pretty sure they're out of minions, in which case it is very well statted for its cost. I, I like saving this pyro for something a little more, um, but I also definitely understand getting tempo on board sure. is very important. Yeah, with, um, with nothing else and with uh, not keeping that... Or did the Holy Smite already come down? He smited the one That's right, yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely less valuable without the Holy Smite, although coin, coin pain is still there. Yeah, it did trade very well, uh, should the weapon not have been there. And uh, even the weapon being there, it means there's no development of a second Murloc for that turn four Megasaur value. Yeah, so we might see a Megasaur next turn just to really push the issue on, you have to deal with this now. Um, or we could see a much slower play of this uh, Cold Light Seer just establishing the Murlocs and going for a big value turn. You know, given that he's running double bone mare and Tyrion, honestly, it's just nice to know, do you have death? Yeah. Because an early five attack minion, four health isn't really what you want to death, but that early, it may be what you, you need to. to get rid of right yep. away. So now I think we're seeing consideration for coining out Thalnos. I think that could be the only thing you're thinking about. It could be possibly coin pain as well, if you're really afraid of this Murloc, but it's going to be coin Thalnos. Um, he wants that Raza. Yeah, yeah, and and with no board clears in hand yet, uh, you know you're looking for dragon fire, looking for shadowed horror. But uh, I'd like to see this Megasaur come down anyway. Me too. Um, I think what would be a good pickup. A lot of things. Plus three attacks. That's it at four three. Not bad. Um, I wind fury. I don't hate wind fury because it just trades so well. It kills everything. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Living Spores always has the potential to get Potion of Madness and give your opponent value. So I definitely don't think you go Living Spores. I think you uh, either go Viscous Membrane or... Um, oh, it's Liquid Membrane. Or uh, Lightning Speed. So I think you take the yeah. Winfury here, probably. I bit, think it's bit, the best choice. Bit of a tough call. Um, I think if there were any buffs, uh, like... Cobalt scale bane that could maybe come down the next turn. You could argue for the liquid membrane, but yeah, getting the nice trades here. Uh, I think did he take the wind fury? Did he miss an attack? Uh, he did not take the wind fury. He, oh, he took, took the, the, the death rattle. Death rattle, which is not punished at this point. Yeah, you could argue maybe potion of madness would have come down already. And although... you asked the question, do you have death? And J Fury promptly answered with, yes, I just yes. found it. Yes, I do. But uh, that means it won't be there for Tyrion or for this, uh, for this blessing probably of kings blessing that could of come kings down. coming down. That, that is, is a five-seven. Yeah, the consideration going against, you know, Highlander deck is just like, all right, you used it, it's gone. He's gonna go for the value play of um, going wide. I do not hate it. It's, it's not bad. You're still one away from uh, Dragonfire coming down, and uh, typically people don't run Holy Nova in their lists anymore. Yeah, we don't see too many Holy Novas. Um, there was a Holy Nova in the Big Priest, but not it's in Rosakis. This is a good read. It's hard to deal with a 5-5, five five, but you don't get the Bone Mare value. Yeah, Are you happy about that? that? You have to be, right? Uh, I think you're pretty happy about that. Um, obviously, you're happier if you're holding Dragonfire in hand. but Yes, uh, um, but now we see... Blessing of Kings and a lot of damage can start coming face. It's true. So that, you're not uh, as happy as you once were. Once and Wynn is, is a little ways off. And we also have no coin. He coined out Thanos, so we have no coin for Anduin. So, ooh. And uh, so second Bone Mare. All of that strategic play you just made to try and pull a Bone Mare, if that's what you were trying to do, is now punished because now there's another one. Yeah, the uh, Spirit Lash going to maybe pick up a bit of life here. Um, although, no damage taken yet, so there's still a couple of turns to pick up board clear. Yeah, he, he can get there. Only he can, just. 
he can heal back up with Spear Lash. Notable that he's running the uh, like purples version, a uh, purple and orange right, version so of uh, Priest. No Lyra, mostly. But Circle of Healing pickup with that Akanai could uh, do a little bit of work here. Yes. Classic Acolyte Spirit Lash. So we are still one turn away from Anduin if we do go Bone Mare here. So I think you're actually safe to Bone Mare. Yeah, and I, I think you have to. He, yeah, I, I think, you know, your opponent has so few minions at this point. Finja, you know, Finja you want as a backup reload. Yep. But, uh, yeah, Bone Mare, there's... Do you just Bone Mare and make the biggest thing you can? I don't think... Because if you Bone Mare one of the one ones or one twos, yeah, it you, dies. Yeah, you don't want to get extra things in Anduin range. But at the same time, Anduin's a turn off. You're representing lethal over two turns. you definitely Bone Maring something. <laughs> for, for Something sure. is getting Bone Mare. He is going to go big on... Oh, no. Still thinking about it. Must move quickly. Uh, He's still I, making this decision. I, I don't hate either of them. Interesting. Oh, no. Right. Now you got to yeah. swing. You got to make, go. Makes sense. You've already seen death. Uh, you want to... If something's going to live through Dragonfire Potion, why not have it be your highest attack minion? Yep. Hmm, so I think he's a, he's a little late. He can, he can dig. He can dig one more. He gets yeah, one more draw. One more draw. But uh, uh, even Dragonfire kills him. Well, the circle does help. Not enough, though, I right? Uh, I'm not sure. You can clear away. You can clear away everything but the ten seven. So it's it's risky, but it it could get there. Um, Unfortunately, that the rallying one blade would wrap it up. The one ones as well. They no. come from the death rattle. Right, so you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, those one ones. There's really no great way to stay alive, and it's. And I also think it comes down to that adage of, once you start playing to stay alive, yeah. you're no longer playing to win the game. That's correct. So if we're at the point where he's just making plays that are suboptimal just to stay alive, we'll see how it goes. And you know, from what he can see, it, you know, it's not just. Or is it is it lethal on board? I guess it is lethal on board. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's too bad not being able to squeeze in Juicy any other circle. kind of a heal. That is just going to be exact lethal represented on board still. Um, turns out it it was pretty important that bone mare on the the highest attack minion. Yes, it was. Um. Yeah, I mean, because if he had bone or anything else, it would have died to circle, right? Well, there would have been a choice between killing bone mare and killing whatever got buffed, but uh, still, it wouldn't have been as much damage. Exactly. May have been enough with the rallying blade and the uh, rock pool pickup, but not as certain. Yeah, so Rhymnoceros picking up his second win. Uh, that is the Paladin over the uh, Rizakis Priest. And Paladin really does have a way to get there over those Rosaka's Priests. I think they just pose too many threats back to back to back, and Priest just has to have too many answers. Absolutely. Any meta with uh, a bunch of, you know, mid range or control decks, uh, it's always an option to just be like, well, I'm going to throw down my cards in the first several turns, and if you can't deal with it, you're just dead. Yep. Uh, we've got. A win on. Oh, I think. Yeah, there's there's a rogue band on Rhymnoceros' side and another rogue still there that should be a paladin. A paladin. There. Yep. I actually didn't catch that. So a strong start from uh, Rhymnoceros on this warlock. Um, J Fury will be playing the uppermost warlock. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, also, the uh, J Fury's Rogue should be a Warlock as well. That's what we've also messed up. That's right. Didn't catch that one either. Because <laughs> both Rogues were banned, and he brought Druid, Priest, Warlock. You know, we're, ju we're just focused on their, their hands yeah, and what's, yeah, yeah. what's going on. <laughs> uh, 
Who so needs the overlay? Flame Imp is a, is a really strong start, especially when you're up against... I mean, Arceus Veneran does a pretty good job at contesting the Flame Imp. I think you kind of have to throw it down. Yeah, you're uh, weak to Mortal Coil, but not all of them run that. So and uh, it always feels bad to, to Soul Fire yeah, with nothing on board. Oh, Keliseth oh. pickup, though, off the tap. So, someone just got an advantage in this game. It's just a matter of, can Rhymnoceros build enough of a board to where that Keliseth is just too slow? Well, and R Rhymnoceros has the curve to do it. You know, Gul'dan is just going to be sitting there for a number of turns, may well get discarded. Yes. So, many so if it comes many. down to turn 10... So... I like going, but that's because I know um, Jay Fury's hand. Yeah, it is. It is a bit curious to see the the mirrored tap. Maybe he figures like, well, I don't have any great plays. Maybe I'll just pick up some extra resources as well. And uh, Rhymnoceros does not like hearing that truth is found in death. <laughs> no. Um, that's usually not a slogan that you want to hear. Uh, at least it's not being heard twice. No uh, rogue shenanigans. That but, is true. Uh, it kind of when it when, when they ever, whenever they play it, I kind of just. Well, at least there's not three of them. <laughs> I suppose so. But uh, one is one is good enough for a Zoo. Deck uh, notorious for you know just getting on the board and staying there. I got um. I got Kelseth Shadow Stepped. I think I got double Shadow Stepped in finals of the last monthly. Ooh. It it hurt a little bit, but we bounced back. You know, it's it's one of those things where. At least if it's Conquest, you take the loss to Rogue and you move on. And, uh, yeah, that... It's a tough discard right there. It's a um, tough discard, but most importantly, it's not discarding the Doom Guard. You do net gain cards at this point with a double imp. Yes. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, is that Forbidden Ritual is in the deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's shown up on a couple of high legend list just to, as a one of. Uh, I think to give you that refill, a little bit of extra burst if you stick a, a Darkshire Councilman. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's it's interesting. Um, what are we coining? We're coining Doom Guard. I suspect so. That Drawing is, four cards without card tapping. Draw. Hard to pass up, particularly when, you know, against another aggressive deck, your life is very, very important. Yeah, now the hand gets a little clunky for uh, Jay Fury here. I mean, he can he can trade, he gets Soul Fire, but he, he runs a one and four of discarding uh, Gul'dan. I think maybe this Tar Creeper, but still, you're gonna want to Soul Fire something, and uh, you, you yeah you can't unless you really want to run this risk of discarding the Gul'dan. He kind of is in a situation where he has to though, uh, and you you have to drop the Tar Creeper first to stay so, alive. Uh, yeah. So now you have a one and three. It's, and it's a bad trade with the councilman as well. And are you even happy with any of the outcomes? So say you get rid of, like, uh, Flappy Bird or Crystal Weaver. Then the next thing you know, you have really nothing to play in the next coming turns. And You know, there's no demons out for him. He's behind on board, so maybe the Crystal Weaver is probably his best discard. Um, what we may also see is actually just to ignore the Doom Guard, let it hit into the Tar Creeper, and instead soul take out both imps. I don't hate that either. Um, you're saying you're still soul firing an imp, though. I would still soul fire an imp. You know, I think just so much value off those cards. But uh, he's gonna gonna go for the tap. So I think you you do still want to jam the Kel Seth. It's not too late. You still get value off of it if you're Rhinoceros. Absolutely, 25 life. You've got a few more taps in there. Plenty more draws coming up. Yeah, I, I like uh, you're you're ahead on board. So I like Councilman Kel Seth. That's what I like. Um, but might disagree because the Arceus veteran is so good buffing yeah. up this to make it an even trade into the 4-6. Uh, and even getting down, uh, yeah, that is that is the line he's going to go with. Just take care of it's, that Tar Creeper now. It's a little too clean not to take it, I think. Yeah, with the Void Stalker to protect that Doom Guard further. Um, yeah, could just seal up the game. But Despicable Dreadlord. Despicable, Despicable Dreadlord certainly another one of those unusual cards to see in Zoo, but gives it some uh, some nice resources that uh, didn't used to have. It's kind of like a four-five body 
that cast Maelstrom Portal. <laughs> it's like Maelstrom Portal that costs three more mana and gives you a 4-5 four, four, every time. It's, uh, it's pretty well costed. And that's going to clean up a lot. And just like that, J Fury is way ahead on this board. Yeah, it seemed like uh, like that play was setting up for a pretty quick lethal. But uh, now behind on board, I expect to see the trade and... Uh, Maybe just drop Cairn? Yeah, Cairn's, Cairn's pretty stable. So many possibilities. I think you always trade the 1-2 into the 4-1. For sure, you've you've pretty much gotten as much use as you're gonna get out of the ability on that imp. And now we're seeing some options for um for Jafir here. I mean, he can he can buff up, he can crystal weaver, he can he can build his own board. He spent the time clearing boards, and now he is ready to build his own. Absolutely. Um, Seeing the trade into the cairn. It's not so bad. You've, you've got, you know, several targets that your opponent wants to get rid of as quickly as possible. You know he's already down a soul fire. So, uh, this board is pretty threatening. I'm not sure what's, uh, what is the most threatening. Yeah, I think uh, each of them poses their own threats in very different ways. So, it's going to be interesting. I do not like keeping Vicious Fledgling on board. Um, as but an unwritten rule. You take the, the value trade and, you know, the Spickable Dreadlord just cleans up that final bit of health. That is true. Uh, it, it, you know, just can't play the Forbidden because... It's useless. Yeah. It's useless against the Dreadlord. You could play it after trading Dreadlord. Yeah, it may just be time to drop that Keliseth and uh, hope for some bigger top decks. And we will see if he sees what you see. <laughs> will we see a tap as well? Or are we just going to see the Dreadlord no, come I, I down? No, I think you need to get back on board. There's just no time to tap. And there's that value trade that we talked about. Um, the thing is, Gul'dan. Yeah, that Gul'dan has dodged the discards and uh, could represent, you know, just the coup de gras on this game if uh, Jay Fury can make it to turn 10. Is Patches still in deck? Uh, you know, I have not kept track, but I, I believe so. There's not a whole lot of pir pirates, so... Wow. Yeah, out comes the two I draw two patches. patches on turn one most of the time, so it's interesting to see him on turn eight still in deck. You know, some, sometimes it gets there, and now uh, this is quite the overwhelming board advantage for Jay Fury. Saturday Night Chain Gang, if you're going to come back, that's how you're going to start. Absolutely. This is one of the reasons it's in these decks is after Keliseth, even a late Keliseth, getting four mana, eight stats of taunt is, uh, is pretty good. Yep. Can't argue with it. I like, I like playing out your hand almost as much as you can. So you just chain yeah. gang, just get those fledgling, stats on board. flame imp, last ditch effort. Uh, as it turns out, it can go on a little longer. <laughs> just a little longer. Just though. a little longer. Flame imp, not uh, not what you're looking for here. So but I mean, flame imp. You start to get to the point where you kind of have some like reckless abandon for your own life, and I don't really like that. I think you have to be a little more cautious. Yeah, I would definitely, if I were Jay Fury, be protecting that 2-4 taunt. Just a uh, little extra insurance against uh, any Doom Guards or first plays. He disagrees. Um, I'm not sure the best way to make these trades. No. Um, well, I think that's a good start. He's also... You know, valuing that 6-2 and its, its ability on, on board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose there were just too many things to, to take them all out. This does represent, you know, an even trade with the Flame Imp. And you just gotta say, well, if there's Seven. another Doom Guard, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Yeah, so, um, you run into problems with that Moil co Mortal Coil, if it's yeah. there. Um, I don't bad. know if it's there when you have Forbidden uh, Ritual, but... I, honestly, I wouldn't risk playing the Flame Imp here. I wouldn't play it either. Even even with the getting it back off of 
It doesn't... Blood Reaver? You don't push for lethal next turn if you have it. Right. You know what I mean? So, uh, there may be a tap just to... I think every time you tap here. Try you and tap find, every time. Uh, find a lethal. I don't know if Mortal Coil is in the deck, but... Glacial Shard. Shard. Well, Mortal Coil is not in the deck. I can tell you that right now. All right. You just well. ran Firefly, Firefly, Glacial Shard. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Mortal Coil is in the deck. Think, think your one slots are full. Uh, gonna be freezing up that fledgling and uh, finally have the opportunity to play that Forbidden Ritual. And if you're Rhinoceros, you're actually thinking I'm ahead now, unless I see Bone Mare, the other Bone Mare, uh -huh. or Goldan. Well, you know. Honestly, I'd be a little concerned. My opponent's been holding on to that card since, uh, what is so it, the opening hand? Yeah, I definitely think um, he has a hunch yeah, of what it might be. You would have seen Bone Mare. You would have seen pretty much any other card. I'm interested to see a reaction. I mean, um, probably you have to imagine that he, he sort of knows what's coming, but we will see. He's hoping that not. Yeah. Hoping maybe he's got, a, like, a weird Siphon Soul tech or something. And, uh... I don't think there's ever lethal off of Doomguard, so yeah, just going to trade in the Flame Imp knowing it'll come back. Gets taunts off of the Void Walkers, and uh... It's a lot of minions. No charge though, no Doomguards. No, no Doomguards. Losing that spot from the, the Frozen Speaking Fledgling. of Doomguards. Doom guards. Uh, I can't, so can't play them both. Your Forbidden Ritual is gone at this point. Yeah. You just have to accept that. Yep. That's no longer a card in your hand. Absolutely. Um, also, really no great way to get through both of these and push damage. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Without those taunts, uh, he might have had Forbidden Ritual Lethal just from pumping the Darkshire. Yeah, actually, that's insane. I, that's uh, is, that, is that why it's in the deck a lot of times? I think it's one of the reasons as we look... Oh, oh, the tap first. One of those situations where uh, it does not do you any favors. So I think it's also one of those situations where... So is it always better to Doomguard first? Or is it sometimes better to tap first? You know, I think in that situation you want to Doom Guard first, right? Just because Soulfire is your, your best draw, and like if you're going to draw it, it has to be now. Yeah. That uh, that hero power is going to keep you from ever catching back up. Um, no matter what, Acherus Veteran, Soulfire, anything that you're, is going to have an immediate impact, you're going to want to play and yeah so he does luck out on the soul fire yes and he gets did to actually have the same effect out. but uh, didn't ran out of time didn't get the attacks in with the one one yeah and, uh, and uh, as if it wasn't far enough oh the doom guard of his own that is going to nice wrap things job. up that's just lethal yep yep was it lethal anyway do you need that uh, nine it was 13 damage it was lethal it anyway. was lethal anyway and the J Fury picks up a win with his Warlock. Yeah, win so a, in a pretty close in a back close and forth mirror. mirror. Um, so now we see um, Rhymnoceros' Warlock mm -hmm. back up against the wall against the final deck from J Fury, which will be revealed in a second. It's Priest. I don't remember what it was, but it's Priest. So now, this matchup. Honestly. I'm of the opinion it favors the Warlock, especially with that hand. Yeah, this hand is uh, slightly... Some would say good. Some would say I, it's uh, good. I mean, I say that hand. I, really, just the Kelisath. I think you throw, yeah, you you throw, throw the back the three, back. three drops. Uh, oh, I'm going to keep the Fledgling just in case. Why not? Not going to go for the uh, top deck of the 4-4 four, four Fledgling. Although that's very, very good against, against Priest. That's quite, insane. Quite strong. <laughs> quite strong. Generally, just gonna get you there, uh, short of a, a silence. Yeah. I saw the zero man and I was like, Shadow Step! But I was like, <laughs> no, we're still playing Warlock. Yeah, I just. I, uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I don't like Forbidden Ritual in this. I think it's sat in his hand the whole time in the mirror. Maybe that's yeah, because it's the mirror. It's, it's, it's a tough call, you know? I think. Similar to the... Uh, Levon is not happy <laughs> to see that in Game 5 no, right now. No, no, not like, what That like is not see. what you want to see in a 2-2 series. I will tell you that right now. It's not what you want to see when the score is 2-2. Absolutely not. 
Uh, I think even worse than that is going to be seeing that vicious fledgling coming down next turn to really put on the clock. It's going to be looking for a pain here. Nope, Shadow Lord Horror is good. just as good to pair with that uh, that pint size. But it's a, it's a little slower. He gets attacks in with that uh, fledgling first. Yeah, even with the coin. Uh, I think you definitely you drop the, the fledgling here. Oh, I, I, I believe so. And uh, obviously always looking for Wind Fury on that first hit, but short of that... You know, you go for stealth, go for untargetable, so there's still a chance that uh, coining out the the pint-sized horror is gonna is gonna be able to clean it up. Uh, stealth as a mechanic starting to get the appreciation it deserves in the yeah. the world of Hearthstone. A lot of people feeling that uh, the giant wasp <laughs> uh, is is strong and playing yeah. in their priest. Yeah, it's 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 seen some play. Uh, you know, some people have been running holy fire to deal with. Uh, those Cobalt Scale Banes. That is such a scary card to pick up. Absolutely. Soulfire is so scary. Very clutch for dealing with things you wouldn't able to be, able, be able to handle otherwise, but uh, yeah, in a deck of one of us, you risk discarding something important. So now you're like, oh, RNG, just please keep my Raza. Fortunately, or keep my, keep my Kazakas. this is a matchup where you don't necessarily need Raza Anduin to win, and yeah. neither are in hand. So I think I, I meant to say uh, Kazakas, because Kazakas is a valuable board clear. Absolutely. And you well, definitely do not want to see him go. You you don't always high roll the board clear. There's also the combo pieces. He doesn't want to lose, so he wants to lose. He oh. lost his combo piece. Um, he's definitely not That's thrilled. Rough. You can't be thrilled about that. Uh, you know, I, I honestly, knowing that people are generally going to go for the defensive picks first on that fledgling, I might have held on to it, but I can I can respect the soul fire on the fledgling just to make sure I agree. you don't have to deal with any of those shenanigans. Imp gonna come down. Maybe imp imp. Uh, no, you definitely just imp flame elemental. Imp well, imp is a little... you know, after seeing the shadow word horror go away... Maybe you're not afraid. Although it was, and I don't know if he caught this or not, but it was off of the glyph. Yeah. Horror. So it could, still, it could still be dot tacked. So... We're not running deck tracker, so it's not told to you specifically that it's off glyph. I so think you have to be hand tracking. Left, I think if you go on the left, you, it'll show. Will it show you? I, I believe uh, so. I could be when wrong. When it is discarded, maybe that. That's an interesting question. Yukazak is nine and a half times out of ten. <laughs> Here. Uh, probably a five cost potion. Yep, summon two is not bad. Although no uh, card draw minions. What was actually... What would that summon? Uh, I think... Actually, I'm not sure anything yet. I'm not sure he's played a... He hasn't played any minions played a minion. yet. So at this point, just a 3-3, three, three, which is... You have to freeze two. Reasonable. I think you freeze two. Maybe. You know, by the time he plays this potion, he may have had a second minion die. Yeah. Warlock is always going to be trading for the board. And this is his first his first choice, I believe, so... Yeah, I mean, what does Freeze 2 really do? Freeze 2 is usually a sort of a last-ditch, okay, I just need to buy a turn until my board clear, but he just needs the board clear. Yeah, I mean, so maybe plus 4? Then? I don't think... It's nothing to buff. I think you, you take the plus 4 if you know you're going to have minions, so it's going to be the summon... And what was the first part? I of guess that you potion? could get your you could get your Kazakas back. I don't... I did, actually didn't see what the first part was. If we had known, then we probably would have been able to... Um... I think he, he snap picked it. Yeah, so, so it was quite, like impossible quite, quite to possibly see. The, the deal four damage. Yeah, I think a snap pick like that, it's probably that deal four. Um, there was a discussion with my Tespa team of possibly just snap picking whatever the first thing was, even if it wasn't <laughs> deal four, forcing them to play around deal four. Interesting. Very interesting. So you yeah. just kind of like snap pick and you're just like, well, I hopefully I click the right thing. Like, cl 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 uh, click it as fast as possible. Making them think that you picked up deal four. Yeah, with the discover mechanic, that's uh, there's a lot of mind games that go into those picks. You know, whether it's trying to be the actor and just like wait, make them think you have a tough decision. That's sort of the opposite play. Um, if you do have that Tyrion off of Stonehill or yeah. some such similar snap pick situation. 
And the death gonna come down. Pretty easy cleanup of the board. Leaves a 1-1. Are you afraid of a 1-1 right now? Uh, I think you're you're pretty happy that your opponent's board is is, is much reduced. Um, I'd like to see a, a playing this Darkshire. Would have liked to see two there. minions, but uh, you know, just to get it up to four. I don't yeah. believe Pain has been played yet. But the the Darkshire will live if that's deal four. Now yep. it doesn't. Yep. Now it doesn't. Yeah, that potion of madness will. Uh, bring it's it. deal five. Deal five to one. Ah, uh, okay. So still a clear with the potion of madness on this board. Yes, it is, which is a very very nice pickup for him. Although actually, it won't clear the two four. Correct. Will not clear the two four. And I wonder if per perhaps Rhymnoceros was uh, considering that when he opted for the tap instead of playing two minions to, to boost the power up to four. Oh, we had Glimmer Root. He played Glimmer Root. Uh, of course. So of it, course. Was right, the soul it was much better. It was much better. The soul fire. The whole thing. That was the whole thing. Yep, How did we yep. forget that? I forgot that. I blame me. <laughs> um... So it could be uh, maybe Forsaken Gul'dan time and just drop Malchazar's Imp in the Doom Guard. Let's uh, get going, take Gul a value trade, is trade in. Very, very good in this matchup, though. So he it's. Is, you're you're kind of sad to see it before you drop your Doom Guards because now you have to deal with the fact that maybe. Oh, and I. Yeah. It, this play also Forsaken Gul'dan. Because whenever you do play that Doom Guard. Not, not necessarily. You know, one advantage to the the fireflies is you can you can play the one that's been buffed by Kelaseth and then hope you discard. Yeah. The, the and I mean, hand. maybe maybe Forbidden Ritual is just in the deck to get discarded. <laughs> to get discarded. Well, uh, I think generally you you don't play things just to get discarded. If I put bad cards in my deck, that's what they're there for. <laughs> yeah. Then they'll get <laughs> discarded every time. Yeah. There's been a lot of almost. Almost great plays with the Forbidden Ritual, but the Darkshire Councilmen have uh, not been able to shine. Yeah, combo. they have not been able to stick. You really want those to stick and play that Forbidden Ritual and hit him in the face for a bunch. So he's, uh, these three fours, unfortunately, keeping keeping Jay Fury off of trading into that Imp. Yeah, and I think he definitely wants to trade into that Imp. Uh, Doomguard probably going to come out next turn for Rhymnos, uh, for, uh, yeah, Rhymnosaurus. Um, yeah, just gonna this just to keep, just so you can trade and yep. kill something. It's yeah. not bad. Keeps your board intact. I like it. You got you got Anduin next turn, uh, and that'll help you get things rolling. That hero power, even without costing zero, is very good at cleaning up warlock boards. Maybe you tap, play the Firefly, then Doom Guard, and pray. Yeah, I would expect so. Play that buffed up Firefly. But he's gonna go for the extra damage from the Akra's veteran. It's also that's also warranted. And there's that four four, you know. Uh, that play, this play means you're not playing Doomguard. Yeah. Which is why I was confused at the turn for a second. This board's yeah. also he very good. This board's very good wrong. against uh, Anduin. Yeah, that is true. Going into turn eight, that may be what's on his mind. And uh, Spirit Lash has been used. As we've said before, there's no Holy Nova typically. It's not a board you really want to dragon fire, but I think in this situation you would. You would. Um, yeah, I like this play. I actually really like this play. I think it puts himself puts him in a good spot to push some damage and keeps that Gul'dan for turn ten. And you know, as as wonderful value as it is to Doom Guard and then Gul'dan and get that burst damage, there's plenty of value in just playing oh Gul'dan my. first. Goodness, that was the most ridiculous top deck. Oh wow! Oh, and the BM mind blast, comes out. The not mind blast. good in this matchup, oh, but my good here. Gosh, gonna be able to clear all but that Acherus veteran. All that hard counterplay all gone of to the waste. Work. I'd expect to see at this point. You've held onto the Doom Guard so long. Now you're holding you, onto it now. Yeah. Now, now you're you just wait. You play Gul'dan for that board refill. That's a five-six now, isn't it? Too. So. But it will be a four-six post Blood Reaver Gul'dan, and then these Doom Guards are going to be able to draw cards if the Malkazar's Imps are able to stick. Yeah, I. He's still not in a bad spot. Um. All is not lost. All is not lost. 
And even the uh, the end one comes down here, kills off a five six. You're you're still paying for your hero power, you know, yep. like a schmuck. <laughs> who pays <laughs> like, for hero powers like nowadays? Like a peasant. Yeah, who pays for hero powers nowadays? Right? Like, I don't even understand why you would even consider not, it. Not priests. Not priests. That's for sure. But uh, maybe you you, you kind of have to Anduin, right? Yeah, no cards to draw with the auctioneer. You know, it's it's funny. The auctioneer is sort of always part of this deck with with the, the circle and the wild pyromancers and everything. And, and it's sort of this odd balance of you have all these cards that can combo well together, but individually not necessarily what you're They're looking for. They're not great. What yeah. is? There's Chris Rock. He's chilling. <laughs> um, so I see the trade, and I, I you have to Anduin, man. You have yeah, to do not, it. Not a whole lot of other options. And, and you're not uh, gonna love it. You're not gonna. You're not gonna feel great about it. But it represents, you know, at a least, timer. At, yeah. Well, and at least four damage of clear a turn. Right. Yeah. Your opponent's at 15. So if you can ever, you know, keep the board, uh, you have the potential to really ramp things up. Yeah, and Jay Fury kind of knew it was coming, but yep. didn't want to believe it. Um, no charge damage, but that is not a over. very big board. It's not over. No. It's Dragonfire can come off the top, and that's just insane. But honestly, one of the biggest uh, problems here is... He was looking for it. Um, I mean, yeah. you can still get it for next turn. Um, yeah. I think you, know, you definitely have to cycle here, though. You're hardly definitely any damage taken, so he does have a little bit of time. He has time. But that Gul'dan hero power is going to quickly pull Rhinoceros out of range. Um, some shenanigans from this Anduin. <laughs> I like saving the, um... Yeah, at this point you're maybe looking for a Hail Mary three. on uh, a Lyra pickup. Or, although, do they run Lyra? No, no they cut the, the Lyra. instead of the Lyra. Um, you can draw something else. You can, you can get rid of one of those, uh... The imps. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it, you, you have probably to. go for the the to. ones that generate value. Yeah. Shadowward horror is okay, but doesn't do anything yet. And uh, that pine size was used much earlier in the match, just for, uh, for value some, trade. Value trading. Yep. So some pretty easy ways to deal with this board um i actually don't think you doom guard yet like you just your hand is so good that you can't yeah really with the doom bone guard. mares why uh why, why, why waste? waste it these despicable dreadlords just representing disgusting value of yeah con i mean not quite concentration but consecration minus the face damage every turn still pretty good i'll take consecration with that much stats as well yeah, and those uh, coming back as four fives. Dragonfire potion. No. No. Um, that that's what you need. Pretty much his only out would have been a full clear, but uh, that's gonna wrap it up. The Gul'dan playing uh, playing the role he's meant to play in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. Um, doing his job for sure. Um, wow. That's a powerful. Death Knights are good. <laughs> Death Knights are Death Knights are quite really good. good. They are, uh, you know, game ending, to say the least. So uh, he can he can clear and keep himself alive, which is what he's gonna do, and that's very respectable. Uh, keep himself alive on board, that is. Mm -hmm. He's uh he's dead in second bomb right now. Yeah, especially with the Soulfire top especially deck. That is going with the to Soulfire top deck. Wrap it up. He's what I like to call extra dead. He's much more dead. It's like, which way? How do you want to do it? I like this way because it shows him what else like was in <laughs> yep, his hand, like yep. what else I could have killed you with. Yeah, that and all aggro lineup. Rhinoceros on to the finals. That all aggro lineup. Punishing. Absolutely. Punishing his greedier Get, decks. Getting in some work. And uh, we can probably get him over for an interview. Can't yeah, see can chat, hop over for an interview if, you, if you'd like. Smorks going on. Oh yeah, I mean the the face was real. Uh, how's how's it going? Good. How are you feeling right now? Onto the finals. Pretty crazy. Didn't expect this to be honest. Yeah, I mean you showed up for uh, what Nemzi, and now here you are. Um, 
How's it feel? How's it feel to it's the power of Nemzi for sure? It, it's definitely the power <laughs> of Nemzi. Did, did, are you? What, was it actually Nemzi that we were playing with? I wasn't even paying. I was so no, like focused on the gameplay. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it doesn't matter once you yeah. drop down Death Knight. That is true. <laughs> Back to like cooldown. One or two wins away from Golden Warlock, so I was hoping to like. I think I might be able to win it with the. Uh, oh. I might get my Golden Warlock with oh, this. Oh yeah, I think it's a rank play though. Is it? Doesn't it matter. I believe it anyway. is a play. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well. Anyway, I have a question about Forbidden Ritual. Yeah. How do you feel about it right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a pretty crazy top deck uh, that beat it, but I think it put me yeah. in a pretty, pretty good situation. And yeah, I was. Uh, I like to try to play a few cards that aren't expected. Yeah, so. I was. I, I'm gonna be honest. I was bashing it a little bit. <laughs> it sat in your hand for so long in like the first few games that I didn't mm -hmm. really see the purpose for it, but. Reza yeah. was very confident that uh, eventually that Dark Shire Council would get some serious value. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, well, the two never came into the uh, right situation together. But. Yeah, it's one of those things where where it works, it just blows. You know, it's like a game winner right away. Yeah, and uh, so how are you feeling about your uh, you're in the finals now? So how are you feeling about how your decks are going to fare up in the next round? I think you you were able to watch the other semifinals. So uh, how do you how do you feel? Yeah, I think it's pretty funny the two of us that are in the finals have some pretty <laughs> abnormal decks so i mean that that's raise a specialty so um it, yeah it, it works i was i was saying earlier i mean my lineup would have been uh big priest big druid miracle <laughs> rogue just to you know make people think i'm playing the big three and then throw them off exactly yeah i mean i i sort of set my lineup knowing probably most people would bring priest and druid so i mm -hmm. went all aggro and it work so far <laughs> yeah i mean uh murloc paladin absolutely farms yeah. priest yeah. so i think you uh felt pretty confident there yeah um yeah we're looking forward to seeing you in a good final we'll uh, take All a quick right. break and we'll be we'll be right back at it, right back at it soon so uh thanks, thanks. man good luck yeah. and congratulations good luck. on the semis